Good morning, good gamers. The 1.17 update came with a lot of things. A lot of those things are pretty useful. Useful farms. That's where I come in. In today's video, we're going to take a look at three must-have easy 1.17 farms. I'm going to run through some shorter mini-style tutorials on each build. Let's get into farm number one. Minecraft 1.17 didn't update the caves at all, except it kind of did. It also updated the underground. Down under the ground, if you're lucky, you'll be able to find an amethyst geode. That's where we need to go first. All amethyst geodes are unfortunately not created equally. Some geodes are a little bit smaller. For this farm to work better, you're going to want to find as big of a geode as possible, and it also should be as close to your base as possible, so it's actually loaded in. So something like this geode right here, I mean it would technically work for sure, but do you see how many amethyst buds are here? Yeah, like not very many. So maybe something a little bit bigger would be better. In terms of taking steps in a direction, well, that's what we did. We took steps in a direction, but this is actually worse. This geode is, I think, actually smaller. It is not good. But this geode right here, yeah, 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 that's definitely more like it. This is a pretty decent sized geode. It's perfect. Technically, to set up farm number one, you really only need two things. It's very, very easy to set up. You're going to need pickaxes, probably more than a couple, and an amethyst geode. But if you want to make this farm a little bit easier to use and maybe even a little bit better, there are some other things that you could get, including scaffolding or ladders so you can get around to the buds. And only if you want to, but you could probably try and figure out some kind of different collection system using water and hoppers and chests. But honestly, it's easier to just pick up the amethyst shards yourself. But at the bare minimum, pickaxes and a decent sized amethyst shield. Farm number one is an amethyst farm. Amethyst farms are insanely easy to set up and definitely 100% never require redstone. Do not set an automatic farm up for this thing. It is not worth your time at all. And when it comes to rates for automatic amethyst farms, unfortunately, it's just not very efficient at all. There's a way better way to do it, the manual way. So to set up this amethyst farm, first find a geode. After you found the geode, get a pickaxe and start digging. Basically dig every single block out that isn't the budding amethyst block. Normal amethyst block, they have to go. Any other block that might be touching budding amethyst, calcite, smooth basalt, maybe even stone, they have to go too. Dig. The goal here is to isolate all of the budding amethyst blocks. Now, if you're looking for amethyst blocks, good news here, you're gonna get a ton of these things. The geodes are made out of amethyst. Yeah, that makes sense. You will get so many amethyst blocks from actually digging this thing out, and maybe, depending on what you're trying to do with these amethyst blocks, enough amethyst blocks that you don't even need the farm. If you somehow didn't know yet, you actually can't move the budding amethyst blocks. If you mine them, they're gone. If you try and move them with the piston, they break. So basically, that means you're going to have to work with whatever you have here. Wherever the budding amethyst blocks are is exactly where the budding amethyst blocks have to stay. Now, if you have a situation like this right here where you have budding amethyst blocks sharing one single block right here, making an awkward growing situation, doesn't matter at all. You leave them both here. Don't take them out. When setting up an amethyst farm, there is one rule. Never take out the budding amethyst blocks. If you take out the budding amethyst blocks, it's not good. If you can get a better pickaxe, something like netherite, this process will be so much quicker. Now, to make your life a little bit easier when mining this thing out, it might be a smart idea to work from the top down. So, like, <laughs> not at the bottom first. Now, digging. So, I'm going to go ahead and speed this process up. We're trying to get rid of all of the amethyst blocks, so those are all gone. As you can see here, doing that completely opened this thing up a huge time. There are a few more blocks that I'm going to have to get rid of. But yeah, this thing is way more open. However, we still do have some other blocks touching the budding amethyst. It seemed like most of those other blocks are actually calcite, so boom, there we go. Calcite is gone, no? That's way more open. This is basically it. This is the budding amethyst farm. Now, there are a couple different things that you could do to make your life a little bit easier. So walking around in here, obviously, it's going to be insanely difficult, even impossible to, to actually reach some of these higher up blocks. Scaffolding. Problem solved. The scaffolding. If you're lucky, you might be able to get away with a scaffolding setup that kind of looks like this right here. Just really depends on where your budding amethyst blocks actually generated. So that's basically it. Clear out the geode, isolate all of the budding amethyst blocks, and then give it time. Once your amethyst clusters have fully grown up, like this one right here, come back with a Fortune 3 pickaxe. If you mine an amethyst cluster with a Fortune 3 pickaxe, you can receive up to 16 amethyst shards from a single cluster. It's insane. Finally, item collection system. If you really wanted to, for whatever reason, you could set up an item collection system using water, hoppers, things like that. Maybe even a hopper minecart. To be honest, I don't recommend doing it. It's going to be a lot more digging, a lot more work. And honestly, you're going to be here manually harvesting the farm anyway, so you might as well manually pick things up. But if you wanted to, here you go. Level out the floor. Make it flat. One block below where your lowest amethyst cluster will grow. Also, flatten the walls. There should be one block past where amethyst clusters will be growing too all over the floor once it's flat put water maybe hoppers in the middle water stream in the middle something like that going over to a chest and there you go budding amethyst blocks are probably going to be very chaotically placed though so amethyst shards will end up falling on top of the budding amethyst block when you harvest them 
It's really not worth your time, but you could. Before we take a look at farm number two, fun fact, did you know that I have a YouTube channel? Yep, that's right, that's actually what you're watching this video on right now. If you want a video just like this one every single day, then I highly recommend that you subscribe, because that's what you'll get. Also, I have a subreddit. It's a really cool place to show off your builds, your memes, and maybe even your hot takes. Okay, never mind, not the hot takes. But builds and memes, definitely. The good thing about farm number two, it takes way less time to set up. The unfortunate news, not really unfortunate. It does require some specific building materials, a little bit more than the last one. To build farm number two, a compact dripstone multi-farm, you'll need two points of dripstone, one dripstone block, a bucket of lava, a bucket of water, some building blocks, and a cauldron. More good news, the dripstone multi-farm can really be built anywhere. As long as it's loaded in, you're good. Start by building seven or so blocks up into the air. Seven doesn't technically matter. It could be a little more, a little bit less, but seven is pretty good. After that, place a block of dripstone, temporary block, permanent block right here, all in a line. Then we can go ahead and get rid of that, place another temporary block there, and another one there. Now we're going to build walls around the top of both of these blocks. So more building blocks right in here. Building blocks technically don't matter. You could use tinted glass like me. You could use concrete. Doesn't really matter. You want to end up with something that kind of looks like this. Now right above this one right here with the dripstone block, water. Above this other one, lava. Then we can jump down. We'll go ahead and get rid of all of these other blocks right here that we used to build up. Those were temporary. We don't really need those. And then finally, point to dripstone right there, point to dripstone right there. Below the lava one, we need a cauldron, directly below. Now, if you pay attention to this one right here, eventually it's going to start dripping lava. Once it starts dripping lava, it's actually like literally dripping lava. It will actually slowly fill up this cauldron. The rate is going to be about one cauldron per day, so if you want better rates, do this thing like over and over and over and over again. This thing over here is dripping water, but uh, this isn't actually going to farm water. If you wanted it to farm water, get another cauldron and place it right there, but honestly, a water farm, like, like seriously, yeah, it, it's a waste of time. And don't farm water with this thing. Instead, this thing is going to slowly actually grow dripstone. It'll grow dripstone up here, and as long as we have a solid open block right here, it will grow dripstone down here. Now, the dripstone growing process, aha, bad news, very bad news. It's very slow. It's going to take a long, long time. You're going to have to be really patient, so if you want a lot of dripstone fast to do this over and over and over again, make sure the ground isn't too far away. And yeah, just like with the lava one, but way more time, eventually you'll get dripstone. You could mine the dripstone with any pickaxe. You could even automate it if you wanted it to, but honestly, mining it manually is probably a little bit easier. Set this thing up near your base, go do something else, come back every once in a while, and you'll be able to farm dripstone and also lava. Now, real quick for this example, let's say this filled up all the way already. That's kind of crazy. Once your lava cauldron fills up, of course, to continue this thing, you're going to need to take the lava out. So grab a bucket, take the lava out. If you're loaded with iron, just keep the lava in the buckets. If you're not loaded, clear out an area, something kind of like this, and start dumping your lava down and storing it there. Be careful not to fall into this thing, obviously. And if you have the fire tick game rule set to true, that's the default, then don't build this next to wood either. It will literally burn it down. Not good. I like to end on good news, so one more bit of good news, just like that Amethyst Geode farm that I showed you before, it works on Java and Bedrock Edition. It's pretty cool. Farm number three, Bedrock only. Okay, so this farm is, is absolutely busted, so uh, check this out. Cauldron on the ground, potion inside of the cauldron, and yeah, it's a literal potion inside of the cauldron. That's pretty cool. That's basically how this farm is going to work. Now, to be clear, this farm is a bug. It will not work forever. Farm number three is a 1.17 potion farm. This is a renewable potion farm that costs almost nothing. To build this farm, you'll need pointed dripstone, cauldron, bucket of water, a potion to get this thing started, and building blocks. We're going to start by building a couple blocks up into the air. Something like this is probably pretty good. We'll place another block right here, and just like with that compact dripstone multi-farm, we'll build walls around this thing and remove that in the middle. Then we'll put water right there, jump back down, remove this, remove this, remove this. We don't need those anymore. We'll put pointed dripstone right down there, and as long as that drips, we're good. After that, right below the pointed dripstone, we will place a cauldron. Then we'll take a potion of our choice that we'd like to duplicate. So let's say invisibility today. That's kind of cool. We'll put that inside of the cauldron and then we wait. Slowly but surely, this pointed dripstone is going to fill up the cauldron. And this time, because there's a potion inside of it, it will literally fill this cauldron up with a potion. This is, it's actually insane. Give it a little bit of time and it'll fill up another layer then you can actually come over to this thing with a glass bottle and take one layer of the potion out for this to continue to work you will need to have at minimum one layer of the potion inside of the cauldron at all times if you empty it all the way like that then it's going to fill up with normal water this thing is insane like legally insane you shouldn't be near it it's crazy this thing is really really overpowered now it's a bug so eventually it's going to go away 
but potions. When it comes to the potion, do not try a splash potion or a lingering potion. You need a normal version of whatever potion you're trying to do. Now, good news, when it comes to potions, literally any potion is going to work. It could be an instant health one. It could be a strength two one. It could be slow falling. That's a big one right there. It's totally up to you any potion. It all works the same because potions can go inside of cauldrons, so it does not matter at all. Another cool thing about this farm, expanding it is very, very easy. All that you need to do is literally expand it. Take the walls down, put more water, put another pointed dripstone, another cauldron with a different potion in it, and then you're good to go. This next part is totally optional, but I highly recommend it. Grab a sign, crouch, place it on the cauldron, type whatever kind of potion you have inside of the cauldron, and then there you go. So this is an invisibility cauldron. That's going to fill up with invisibility potion. This one is leaping, so I'm going to put leaping on it so I can remember. And now I know. Leaping potions are right here. Invisibility potions are right here. If you play Bedrock and you use potions at all, this thing is busted. <laughs> Absolutely busted. And you need to get on it like right now. Go into your world, set this thing up because it is insane free potions just let this thing run stock up on the potions in the future it's going to be gone so if you want potions now and you're keeping your world long term it's a must have for sure and so that's going to do it three must have easy 1.17 farms there they are what's your favorite 1.17 farm let me know down below big shout out to you for watching this video all the way to this point if you did it i really appreciate you leave a like if you liked it subscribe for more videos just like this one every single day there's a link to the subreddit down in the description check it out i'll see you tomorrow goodbye